In this video, I'm going to show you how to install your brake pad assembly onto your rear Dana 41 axle. And these steps are the same for your Dana 25 front axle as the rear because all of the brake pads are the same. But the only main difference between your Dana 41 rear axle and your front Dana 25 axle is the wheel cylinder. And on the rear, it is a three quarter inch bore while the front wheel cylinder will be a one inch bore on the front Dana 25 axle. Now going over all the parts for the brake pad installation. Right here at the bottom, we have the two brake shoes and pads. What I mean by that, the shoe is the metal part and the pad is actually riveted on to the shoe. And the one critical step here, as you can see, one pad is actually longer. So it goes from the top of the shoe all the way to the bottom of the shoe. And this shoe always faces the front of the Jeep, while the other shoe has a pad that is not as long and go all the way the distance of the shoe. And this will always go to the rear of the Jeep. Now moving up the parts board, we have the rear wheel cylinder. This is your three quarter inch bore. And what I mean by that is a three quarter inch diameter where your brake fluid is. And I do have a video going over how to rebuild your wheel cylinder. Just click on the link above. To install the rear wheel cylinder, there will be two bolts. These are your quarter inch, three eighths long coarse thread with lock washers on both. And these bolts will secure the wheel cylinder to the brake backing plate through these holes at the very top. Now moving over to the return spring and the return spring will be installed on your brake shoes using this hole and this hole where my finger points. Moving up the parts board, we have the lower section and this section will be the adjustment section on your brake shoes. And going over the parts, we have the retaining plate. There is two anchor pins and they have a lock washer and a half inch fine thread nut for each. And we also have two brass cams that will be installed into our retainer plate and your anchor pins will go through this whole entire assembly and then right through these holes, right through the backing plate on the axle. The two lower adjusting bolts will be installed through these two holes at the bottom of the brake backing plate. Finally, at the top of our part board, we have the upper adjustment section. This section will be on the upper part of your brake shoes. And here we just have two upper eccentrics and each have a lock washer and a fine thread 3 8 nut for both. The upper adjusting bolts for the brake shoes will be installed through these two holes on the brake backing plate. The first step is to install the 3 quarter inch rear wheel cylinder through these four holes on your brake backing plate. We'll just align the holes, the three holes at the top, and we'll just push it right in. The next step is to install the two quarter inch bolts on the back side of the brake backing plate, threading them into the wheel cylinder. Torque the two wheel cylinder bolts to 10 foot pounds. The next step is to install the two upper centrics through the two upper holes on the brake backing plate where my fingers point. And we have to make one key note and that is the eccentric is not exactly centered with the cam. As you can see, there's a short point at the top and a longer point at the bottom. You want the shorter point towards the outside or towards the brake shoe on both sides. And we will install it with the threads facing inwards towards the axle and install it with the smaller point facing out on both sides and a smaller point will allow the brake shoes to be installed easier and then that's a good starting point for the brake pad adjustments when the brake drum is installed later. On the back side of the upper centric, now put on your 3 8 lock washer and 3 8 fine thread nut. Repeat the same step on the other side. Only hand tighten these two knots as they will have to be adjusted later. 
One important note before both brake shoes can be installed onto the wheel cylinder, we have to make sure this slot where my finger points is vertical, as this is where the tongue on the brake shoe will ride. If it's not vertical, get a large flat head screwdriver. We'll stick it into that slot and then we'll turn it until it is vertical. It's actually very easy to turn, but make sure you adjust this now on both sides before installing the brake shoes. The tongue on the brake shoe I'm referring to is this part where my finger points on your brake shoe. This right here will ride in the slot we just adjusted on the wheel cylinder. Next, we have to install the return spring that will go onto your brake shoes. And you want this hook to go through these holes where my finger points. The hook will go under on the longer brake pad side which will always go towards the front of your Jeep, while your hook will go on top on the side with the smaller brake pad. Now it is time to install the two brake shoes onto the wheel cylinder. And to do so, we want to make sure we have the two brake shoes already pre-assembled with the return spring connecting both. This is actually very critical as it avoids you having to get special tools to install these two brake shoes. And you want to make sure that this is orientated in the correct direction. The longer pad is towards the front of your Jeep and the shorter pad is towards the rear of your Jeep. And the way we have our axle set up, the front is towards the right, which the longer pad will go. And to install this, we have to put the tongue first into the wheel cylinder as so. And then we'll just stretch it out and then we'll put it into that slot that's attached to the brake backing plate. Once you got your front brake shoe installed, now to install the rear brake shoe, we first have to put the tongue into that slot on the wheel cylinder, just pulling it into position. We'll get it into that groove, being careful not to damage that rubber, and then put your hand at the bottom, and then just pull on the brake shoe, and that will allow the spring to stretch, and then we can get it into that slot on the brake backing plate, and it'll just slide in as so. Once you have the two brake shoes roughly installed, you will have to readjust these to get these two bottom holes in line so we can install the anchor pins. And to do so, just put some pressure on the top while kind of twisting the bottom, and that will allow your holes to line up. The next step is to install our lower anchor pins through the two holes at the bottom of our brake shoe and backing plate. And we'll have to make sure we assemble this first. We have our anchor pin that goes through the retaining plate as so on both. But you want to make sure we have our anchor pins aligned properly before we install them for the initial brake adjustments for later on. So you see these two small indents at the bottom. You want these towards the bottom pointing down and these tabs pointing inwards. And the trick for that is on the right side, this flat part is towards the top and on the left side, the flat part is towards the left. And then we also have to put on our two brass cams as well. And the brass cams only go on one way. This right angle will fit on the right angle on the anchor pin as so, just pushing it on like that. It'll just slip right on and make sure it's on flat. And do the same thing for the other side, just push it on. And now we have the assembly built and now we can just push the whole anchor pin assembly right through the two holes at the bottom of our brake shoe. We'll just slide it in as so. Now we have to get the brass cam to seat into the holes on the brake shoes on both sides and that will allow your retainer plate and anchor pin to sit flat against your brake shoes. You may need to adjust the brake shoes to get the anchor pins to seat into those holes. Just have to wiggle your brake shoes around and wiggle your anchors around until it seats flat in there. Fast forward and the retainer plate and two anchor pins are now flat against the brake shoe on both sides. So now we know that the brass cam is seated in properly. Now we have to move to the back side on the brake assembly to put on our lock washer and nut. Now slide on the two half inch lock washers on both lower anchor pins. Then install the two half inch fine thread nuts on both. 
Only thread knots until they are hand tight because you have to make further adjustments for the brake pads later on using these two anchor pins. The driver side is the exact same steps as the passenger side in regards to the three quarter inch bore wheel cylinder on your rear Dana 41 axle. All brake assemblies are the exact same for the rear and the front. Just make sure in the front you have your one inch bore wheel cylinder. That is all. Subscribe. <laughs>